Good morning everyone. Today we're going to be thinking about hope and what it means to hope in the Lord. I'm going to pray and then I've got a code for you to try and break. Father God we pray that as we spend this time together thinking about what it means to hope in you that you'll be teaching us and inspiring us to follow you to hope in you to know your love in our lives. Amen. So as you can see there are some pictures on the screen this is a really simple code that's going to uh, help us uh, spell out uh, a verse from the bible to do with trusting and hoping in god and all you have to do is take the first letter of each picture so we have an igloo first letter of an igloo is i so the first word is I. So have a look at the rest of this first part. It's two parts, two uh, screens you'll need to look at. Have a, rest, a look at the first part. And remember, you can always pause the video if you need a bit more time. So here is the second part of our memory verse, exactly the same. Take the first letter of each picture, put them together to uh, help solve our memory verse. Again, you might need to pause the video just to give you a bit of time. And hopefully you got these words that are on the screen right now from Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. So would you say this with me? I will bless the person who puts their trust in me. Jeremiah 17 verse 7. I will bless the person who puts their trust in me. Jeremiah 17 and verse 7. In our session today, we're going to uh, do a story about three people who had to put their trust, their hope in God in quite a, a difficult and scary situation. Before we have the story, though, we're going to uh, have a song and we're going to sing about uh, God as our lighthouse, the person who leads and guides us, who we can put our hope in. So why don't you join with me in singing My Lighthouse? In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the beast in my troubled sea. You are the beast. You will carry me safe to shore. 
Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were children. Together with their best friend Daniel, they had been taken from their home, taken to be prisoners in a place called Babylon. Most of their friends and families had been taken with them. Some of them were put to work in the fields. Some of them were put to work chopping down trees to make wood. Most of them were given not very nice jobs to do, but just one or two were taken to the royal palace. There they were to be trained to be helpers to the king. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, together with Daniel, were four of these people. And in the royal palace they worked hard. They made the best of what they could do. Their friend Daniel had been promoted to be a very important person in the kingdom. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego kept trusting in God that he was with them even though they were in a foreign land. Now, the king at the time, King Nebuchadnezzar, had ordered a great statue made of gold. This statue was of him. And he wanted people to treat him more like a god than a king. He made this law. When his musicians played, everyone had to bow down to the statue. This created a real problem for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They loved God, and they knew that God didn't want them bowing down to other gods, to false gods. What were they to do? It would be easy just to pretend to bow down to the statue. They didn't think that was right. But the punishment for not bowing down when those musicians played, well, it was pretty severe. The punishment was that they would be thrown into the fiery furnace. Anyway, the king ordered his musicians to play when everyone was gathered in the town square. There were thousands and thousands of people and as soon as the music started, they all bowed down. It soon became obvious to all the guards, even to the king himself, that three people had refused to bow. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Now the king thought, well, Maybe they just didn't understand what was at stake. So his soldiers were told to warn them what would happen if they refused to bow. Musicians played again, but Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego remained standing. The king started to get furious. How dare they not bow down to me? Don't they realise I'm more than a king? I'm a god? And he ordered Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego brought before him. Why wouldn't you bow? he said. We will only bow before the Lord our God, they replied. The king had them taken to the fiery furnace. He said, if you do not bow this final time, I will have my guards throw you into the fire. Now, of course, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were terrified. But they couldn't give up on their faith in God. They couldn't give up on their hope that God loved them. So they had decided they were not going to bow, whatever the threat was. And when the music played and they stood upright, the king said to the guards, throw them into the furnace. As they stood before the furnace, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said these amazing words. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. But the king wasn't impressed. He said to the guards, throw them in, and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were thrown into the flames. But then something astonishing happened. 
what looked like a fourth person appeared in the middle of the flames. And that person seemed to be protecting Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from the fire. The king said to his guards, how many did you throw in? Three, your majesty, they replied. They all looked and saw this fourth person. His clothes were shining bright. They couldn't understand what was going on. Nobody seemed to be being harmed. The king said, open the furnace. Let us find out what has happened. So Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were brought before the king. Where is the fourth person I saw? he demanded. God protected us. He sent his angel to watch over us, they replied. The king was astonished. He'd seen them thrown into the flames that were seven times hotter than normal. But here were Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. No harm had been done to them. Their clothes were not even burnt. God really had protected them. The king realised that something special had happened. The king realised that the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is the only true God and ordered that no harm be done to them. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego lived lives that showed their hope, their trust in God. We have a certain hope that God is there, that God loves us and that God has a place for us to be one day with him. We call that heaven, don't we? And even if things go wrong, we still have that hope. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego would have been terrified, but they still trusted God. It's not always supposed to be easy to be a Christian, but it's the only way for us to live. I will bless the person who puts his trust in me, was the verse we learnt in that game earlier on. If we hope in Jesus, if we hope in God, he will always be there for us. So before we have our final prayer and song, let's have a quiz to see how well we can remember the story. First question. What were the names of the three friends of Daniel? I'm going to give you two of them and then I'll give you a choice for the third. So we have Shadrach and Meshach. So was the third of those uh, three friends Abednego or was the third of those friends Miriam? Decide now. Shadrach, Meshach and... Well, if you have said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, you have of course got that correct. Now you can see there's four images from the story on the screen in front of you and you've got to pick one of them. Each image will be worth a different number of points. So pick your image now. Are you going to go for the the uh, furnace itself or the uh, uh, God looking after them inside there, inside the furnace? Uh, which image are you going to go for? Decide now and we'll have a look at your scores. So here are the scores. If you uh, chose the statue as your image, it's 10 points. 15 points for the three friends refusing to bow and stay and standing up. 20 points if you went for the image of the furnace. And 25 points if you went for the image of God's angel in the flames protecting Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Well done. Question number two. What had to happen to make the crowd bow to the gold statue? that the king had built, what had to happen? Give you a couple of possible answers. Answer A, the musicians had to play their instruments. Or answer B, the guards had to wave their flags. Decide on your answer now. And if you've gone for the answer A, the musicians playing, that's correct, well done, you can pick one of those images for your points bonus, the statue, the three friends not bowing, the furnace or the angel in the flames looking after them. Pick your image now. So the points, statue was 20 points, 
the three friends not bowing 25, 10 points if you chose the image of the furnace and 15 points if you chose God's uh, angel looking after them in the flames. Let's go to our final question. So our final question is what happened to those three friends? They'd been saved from the fiery furnace, God had looked after them, had protected them, they were brought before the king. Answer A is that later on in the story they were thrown in the lion's den or answer B is the king ordered that they be protected that no one was to harm them and that people would be allowed to worship God make your choice and if you've chosen answer B you've got that right king uh, watched out for them and uh, in fact realized that God uh, was the only God worthy of our worship so if you pick that answer choose your image the final opportunity to score some points so if you chose the statue you'd get the 25 points 20 points if you went for the furnace 15 points for the uh, god looking after them inside the flames and 10 points for them not bowing down that was the story of shadrach meshach and abednego It's this God that knows us personally that we can celebrate. So I'm going to say a prayer and then we're going to have a final song. And the song is Who You Say I Am, which reminds us that God knows each one of us and wants to have that special relationship with each of us. Dear God, thank you for that story. Thank you for people like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who lived lives of hope and trust and faith. Help us to follow their example and to live lives of trust in you. Thank you that you are always there to watch over us and bless us. Amen. There's a place